State, Scott Walker, Governor of Wisconsin, is finally ready to send his save the date card. The Wisconsin governor filed papers to run for president with the FEC today. He's preparing to make the announcement on July 13th. Walker has already been campaigning for months. He's gained popularity after stealing the show at the Iowa Faith and Freedom Summit. Walker made a hard right turn to impress Hawkeye State voters. The move could weaken support from moderate voters elsewhere. He puts himself, I think, in a pretty dangerous spot at this point. He's gambling. Walker's early lead in Iowa is already running out of steam. Support has dropped from 25% in February down to 18%, according to the latest Quinnipiac poll. President Obama traveled to La Crosse, Wisconsin today, where Walker greeted him at the airport. Now, there's a picture you don't see very often. Under the president's leadership, the United States added 223,000 jobs to the economy. The employment rate dropped to a seven-year low to 5.3%. Scott Walker, of course, didn't add to those numbers. In his first term, Walker failed to return his state to pre-recession employment levels while the United States surpassed pre-recession levels. The question is, is does uh, you know, the question is, is Walker has failed to perform when it comes to job creation? Sooner or later, Republican opponents are going to start talking about it because the competition is definitely there. Joining me tonight, John Nichols, Washington correspondent of The Nation magazine. Also with us, Genevieve Wood, senior contributor with The Daily Signal. Genevieve, you first tonight. What do you sure. make of this slip by Walker in the polls? Uh, and has he gone too far to the right? There's some political folks out there that say that, you know what, he may have overstepped his boundaries with a lot of voters. What do you think? Well, I mean, talking about the polls, look, he's not officially declared yet. A number of other people have been declaring over the past several weeks, and we've seen all of them, Jeb Bush included, get a nice little bump when they actually make the official declaration. Likely that, that Scott Walker may get the same thing. He's doing well in Iowa. He's been doing well in Iowa for a long time. And look, I think if you look at Scott Walker's piece in Real Clear Politics today, uh, he debunks a lot of what you just said about all the good stuff under the Obama economy and actually takes credit for a lot of good things that have happened in Wisconsin. And as I think I've said, Ed, on your show before, uh, Scott Walker has done what he's needed to do in Wisconsin, being elected three times in four years. So whatever the polls may say, uh, the voters, when given the opportunity to either be for or against Scott Walker, have been for him. But the fact is, Wisconsin ranks 38th in job creation. How does Walker defend his poor record on job creation and also the battle that he's having right now with Republicans from his own party in the state on how to deal with the budget? John Nichols, how does that play out? Well, it's inconvenient. The uh, Walker for President campaign is the worst kept secret in American politics. He's essentially been running for more than a year and pretty aggressively so. That's taken him out of Wisconsin a great deal. And one of the complaints you hear from Democratic and some Republican legislators is that he hasn't paid enough attention to the budget process. That's why it has been something of a mess. But beyond that, um, I, I think that, that one of the real challenges that Walker faces in Wisconsin, and potentially on the national campaign trail, is that over time, Wisconsinites have come to recognize that what he's doing is not working. In the most recent Marquette Law School poll, the disapproval rating for Scott Walker was as high as it's been, up at 55 percent, and mm. against, paired against any of the Republican candidates. Scott Walker lost Wisconsin in what is generally thought of as the best poll of Wisconsinites. Genevieve, uh, how I'll just can make the argument he, again, Ed, that the polls that matter are the ones that happen on election day. And he nobody's had a tougher well, time than Scott Walker in terms of money coming from outside a state, the unions giving in everything they had to defeat this guy. Well, now, and wait none a minute. of them Genevieve, were successful. Uh, let's, let's, get, let's get the facts right here. When there was a recall election, mm -hmm. he got more outstate money than his opponent, Mr. Barrett, the mayor of, of Milwaukee. In fact, he outfunded him seven to one and actually ran against the recall. I don't dispute yeah. what you're saying. The guy knows how to win elections. There's no question about it. Yeah, and but the there people are some, things that, are, have voted some for things that are following him that aren't good. Number one, he's got bad job numbers. And number two, he's in a fight with his own party right now on what to do with the budget. Doesn't that yeah, look bad? I mean, well, he can't get on the same page with his well, own party. I'm, what about that? 
Well, I, I don't think that all, just because you have a Republican uh, Congress at the state level or the federal level, for that matter, that they're all as physically responsible as they ought to be. And I think Governor Walker is more physically responsible than many in his own state house. And look, when he came into office, uh, the state of Wisconsin was in deficits. They now actually have a budget surplus. So again, I think if you look at all the facts on the ground and the voters there have done that, he does well. But look, he's going to have to stand up that record against Governor Rick Perry of Texas, who has great stories out at out to tell there. Uh, Governor John Kasich of Ohio, who's likely to declare later this month, he's going to have good stories to tell. So he's in a strong yeah. field, to be, for, to be for sure. Okay. Well, I mean, among Republicans, I mean, he's as good as any of them, I guess you could say. But <laughs> does, Wisconsin, does Wisconsin have a surplus, John Nichols? Well, that's not what the independent auditors say. The independent auditors say that Wisconsin is looking at a shortfall in the range of $2 billion. That number has obviously moved a great deal. But the thing to understand is that one of the reasons this current budget process has been so very, very difficult, really quite a mess, is because the, the revenues aren't what Scott Walker or others would like them to be. And so yeah. the notion that there's a Scott Walker success story in Wisconsin uh, is certainly not accepted by a lot of Wisconsinites. And I suspect that as this campaign gets going, you will hear many of the governor's Republican challengers or opponents uh, bring up the fact that uh, Wisconsin's numbers are not nearly as good as a lot of other states in the okay. country. And Genevieve, you're a Walker fan, it sounds like. I'm, I'm a Walker fan among a lot of other fans. I think he does have a good record. I think he's been tough right. on the unions, uh, which as has Chris Christie and others. So look, I, I think there's a lot of things he's doing the right way uh, that a lot of people, even though maybe you aren't going to vote for him, uh, there, might, there are a lot of people I think are going to give him a, a first well, and second look. I, I want to see if Scott Walker can draw 10,000 fans anywhere in Wisconsin. <laughs> pick, the pick the Republican stronghold and have at it. I'd like to go see Bernie, that. Great to have both of you right. with us tonight. Thank you.